Okay, so you don't need to know a lot of math in order to solve this problem. And this problem is dealing with a sequence of numbers. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at this sequence. So it starts off with 2 thirds, then the next number in the sequence is 2 six. And what we're looking for is the third number in this sequence, but we do know that the next number or the fourth number in the sequence is negative one third. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna walk through and explain this problem step by step. And remember, the question is looking for the third number in this sequence. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, we have a sequence of numbers, and we want to figure out what this third term is. And this does not require a lot of math. Of course, you need to know a thing or two about fractions. But let's go and take a look at the right answer. The third uh, number in this pattern is 0. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for your knowledge of basic sequences. And this is a big topic in mathematics. But uh, even if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't know uh, what's going on here. Well, we could just kind of use common sense, right? We have a pattern. We're going from here to here. And there's some sort of rule that is uh, going on here, right? So to go from 2 thirds to 2 six, well, there is a pattern, some sort of rule that if we apply that rule, we're going to go from here to here. And if we apply that rule again, we're going to go from the missing number to negative 1 third. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And we are dealing with something called sequences, okay? Sequences is a huge number in mathematics, and they're not uh, to be confused with something called series. Now, series is closely related to a sequence, but a sequence of numbers could be anything. could be like 2, 4, 6, 8. There is a pattern going on here, and a sequence, the numbers in the sequence are referred to as terms, okay? So this is a particular sequence, and this sequence could continue on like so. And there's all different sorts of sequences. Now, let's just take a look at this basic sequence. How are we going from 2 to the next number in the sequence? Well, it looks uh, like we're adding 2, right? So we went from 2. If we add 2, we go to 4. If we add 2 again, we go to 6. We add 2 again, we go to 8. So adding 2 is the rule in this sequence. Now, uh, in mathematics, when you study sequence at a little bit higher level, uh, there is two different types of sequences. Well, there's other types as well, but the main type is something called arithmetic when you're adding a value, and then another type of sequence called geometric. Matter of fact, let me show you geometric, ge geometric uh, uh, sequence. Boy, excuse me, <laughs> I lost my train of, train of thought there, is when you multiply uh, by the same number. So let's start off with 2 and multiply by 3. So what would be our next term in this sequence. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, and then 6 times 3 is 18, and so forth, right? So this is an example of a geometric sequence. Now, uh, this isn't to be confused with something called a series. Now, I'm bringing this up because if you stick with math long enough, you're going to, uh, you're going to run into sequences and series. So let's go back to this sequence, 2, 4, 6, 8. Again, this is a sequence. Now, if we add the terms in a sequence, okay, this thing right here, this is a sequence, this right here is a series, all right? These are very important uh, concepts in mathematics. But uh, anyways, again, even if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not here to uh, learn calculus and advanced math. <laughs> Just show me what the right answer is. Well, you can still get the right answer as long as you have some basic fraction skills because what we need to do is figure out the pattern, okay? But you should walk away uh, from this video knowing a thing or two about sequence and series. So the first thing that we should look at is how do we go from 2 thirds to 2 sixths? okay? What is a possible way 
this could have occurred, right? So we're trying to look for some sort of rule or uh, some sort of, uh, you know, whether this is an arithmetic or geometric, that's not really important, but what is the rule? How do we go from here to here? And then we need to see if this rule still applies with the rest of the terms in the sequence. So let's go ahead and focus in on how we can go from a two-thirds to a two six. All right, so hopefully I didn't mispronounce anything, but let's go ahead and continue on. So here is our sequence, two-thirds, two-six. We're looking for the missing value right here, but we do know that the next or the fourth term in the sequence is negative one-third. All right, so let's just focus in on these first two terms and see how we can go from a two-thirds to a two-six. All right, so there's a couple different ways this can occur, right? So the first thing is we can think of this 2, 6, all right, this right here, 2 over 6. We can reduce this fraction down to 1 third. So this rule, whatever it is, would still apply. We don't have to uh, keep this fraction as 2, 6. We can reduce it down to 1 third. So how can we go from a 2 thirds to a 1 third? Again, if you're pretty good with fractions, you should immediately see that. You can be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, we can simply just subtract a one-third from a two-third, and we'll get back to a one-third. And that is correct because uh, the denominators are the same. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a quick review. Two-thirds minus one-third, when the denominators are the same, all we need to do is subtract the numerator. So this is going to be two minus one over three. Two minus one, of course, is one over three or one-third. All right, so one way we can go from two-thirds to one-thirds is just literally subtract one-third from this number. Okay, so from the first number, if we subtract a one-third, we'll end up with a one-third or a two-six. So that's one possible way of going from two-thirds to two-six. Now, there is another way uh, to go from a two-thirds to a two-six as well because we can multiply, right? So some of you might uh, kind of uh, looked at this pattern and thought, of, well, we can multiply by one half, and that's fine as well, because two thirds times one half, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So two times one is two, and three times two is six. So to go from a two thirds to a two six, we could multiply by one half. All right, so which one of these rules is correct? Well, we don't know. We're going to have to do some testing. And that's why this problem uh, should not be uh, you know, too difficult if you understand fractions and you're willing to kind of stick with the problem long enough. All right, so 2 thirds to 2 6. Is it negative 1 third or 1 half? Well, we have to kind of test each one of these rules, but we have to get this value and then test uh, these rules again to see if we can get to a negative one third. So that is the strategy. So let's go ahead and get started. Matter of fact, let's start with the multiplying by one half. All right, so we know that if we multiply two thirds by one half, we get to two six. So let's multiply uh, that two six by one half to get this number, okay, that third number in that term. So 2 6 times 1 half is going to be 1 6, right? So if we take this 2 6 and multiply by 1 half, you can see the work right here, but the 2's cross cancel, or we have 2 over 12, which reduces down to 1 6. All right, so the third term is 1 6, but this rule of multiply by 1 half has to stay consistent in the sequence. So if we take that 1 6 and we multiply by 1 half, well, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to end up with a 1 12, right? So this is positive, and this is positive, and this next uh, number, the fourth number in the sequence, is negative. So this cannot be the rule. Okay, so 1 6 cannot be our answer. So when you're testing values for a sequence, you just can't say, oh, I know uh, the rule. Uh, we can multiply by 1 half, so therefore the answer must be 1 6. You have to make sure that this rule remains consistent, you know, throughout the pattern. All right, so uh, what we need to do now is to see if this other uh, number is going to work. But before we do that, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Well, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. I can't force you to do anything. But uh, if you're spending time with me in this video, which obviously you are if you're <laughs> watching me up to this point, 
I definitely appreciate it. And if you're a current subscriber, thank you so much. I just recently uh, passed 600,000 subscribers. I think I'm up to like 609. I mean, it's pretty exciting to uh, be at this level. And uh, what's happened for me on YouTube is I've started a long time ago. And I wasn't really paying attention to numbers. I just posted for many, many, many years. And I really started putting a lot of effort into my YouTube channel probably maybe like five years ago. Although I have videos as old as 10, even older than that, 10 years old on my channel. But to me, this is a good reminder of anything that uh, anything good comes with kind of like compound interest. If you stick with something for long enough and you try to improve and you get better and get better and get better, you know, ultimately you're going to reach some level of success. And it's the same thing with math. If you're struggling in math, you know, and you want to, let's say, uh, learn calculus, but you don't even know how to add or subtract fractions, you can achieve that goal. But it's going to take time and you have to invest in yourself. And that's the way I kind of want to, um, you know, for those of you out there that are struggling with math, think about math as an investment in yourself. Try to change your attitude. But, uh, you know, if your attitude is one of I can't learn math or I don't like math, well, the more math you learn, as far as I'm concerned, the better off you're going to be. But uh, you need to make that investment, and I'm asking you to invest in my YouTube channel so I can reach as many people as possible and try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So hit that subscribe button, and if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell. By the way, if you need help with basic math, okay, check out these two courses. You'll find links to those, uh, both of these courses in the description. The first is my Math Foundations course, and my other course that is excellent, I think, is Math Skills Rebuilder. I uh, talk about basic math. We do more pattern problems uh, and, you know, uh, problems similar to uh, this particular problem, and I give you a basic introduction to sequence and series as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the problem, and uh, really what we need to do is test this negative one-third to see if this works out. All right, so if we know if we take two-thirds and subtract a one-third, we do get to a two-sixths, which, of course, is the same thing as a fraction one-third, okay? So one-third minus one-third is zero, okay? So let's go ahead and just test that real quick. So two-sixths, again, this is our second number, right? Second number, and I can reduce that two-sixths down to one-third. So that uh, two six is the same thing as one third minus one third. Okay, we're going to test uh, this, or we're going to find the third uh, number in this pattern. So we have one third minus one third is zero. Okay, so we have a zero right here. Now what we need to do is uh, test to see if zero minus one third is in fact one third. Okay, so zero. If we subtract a one third from a zero, indeed zero minus one third is negative one third. Okay, so hopefully you're going to walk away um, from this video with some basic terminology about sequence and series. And most importantly, you know, uh, I hope that you had some sort of fun with this, right? Like riddle problems or, you know, things that you can figure out, you know, on your own that don't require a lot of math, but do require you know, your ability to kind of stick with the problem. You know, I don't know if you like to play cards. I like to play cards and other type of games. If you like to play games, that's so good for your your mind, you know, because you're reasoning out. And if you like uh, games with numbers, that's even better. Okay, there's a lot of studies that show that really does keep your brain sharp. So if you like learning math just to learn math, that is fantastic. But again, if you need uh, actual math help, then check out my full main math courses. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.